W Land Planning for Outdoor Scenarios. Welcome to the W Land Planning class. In this course, we will discuss how to plan a W Land in an outdoor scenario. Upon completion of this course, you will be able to understand 1. how to plan outdoor W Land coverage design, 2. how to select APs and antennas, 3. how to plan the outdoor W Land bandwidth, 4. Basic Principles for AP Deployment First, let's look at the overall roadmap for network planning and design. For outdoor WLAN planning, coverage and capacity are still the major factors to be considered. The coverage is affected by two factors, the coverage distance of a single AP in an open area and the attenuation caused by obstacles. Different from indoor coverage, where omnidirectional antennas are mostly used, Outdoor coverage uses APs with omnidirectional or directional antennas. Therefore, the coverage distance of a single AP in open areas is not a fixed value and may vary according to the AP and antenna models. The second factor is the attenuation caused by obstacles. Typical obstacles in outdoor areas are trees and houses. Signals cannot pass through these obstacles. Therefore, in outdoor areas, Signal coverage that passes through obstacles is not considered. Another difference between outdoor coverage and indoor coverage is that the field strength in outdoor areas is smaller than that in indoor areas. The field strength in indoor areas must be at least minus 65 dB, while that in outdoor areas must be greater than minus 70 dB, and that in key areas must be greater than minus 65 dB. The second factor to be considered in W land planning is the capacity. The outdoor coverage area is large and the user flow and mobility are high. Therefore, the outdoor coverage area does not have specific capacity requirements. However, in areas such as densely populated squares and concerts, the network capacity is required. The number of APs that can meet capacity requirements in these areas is calculated based on the total number of users concurrency rate, and bandwidth required by a single user. In these two factors, the coverage is the basis and the capacity is a higher requirement. The capacity is relatively easy to calculate. Therefore, we will check how to calculate the capacity first. The single user bandwidth and concurrent number of users are listed in the following table and are also the same as those in indoor scenarios. At the bandwidth of 512 kilobits per second, the maximum of concurrent users is 30 on a single radio and 50 on dual radios. At the bandwidth of 1 megabit per second, the maximum of concurrent users is 20 and 40 on a single radio and dual radios respectively. At the bandwidth of 2 megabits per second, the maximum of concurrent users is 15 and 25 on a single radio and dual radios respectively. In other words, the capacity planning for outdoor areas is the same as that for indoor areas. Next, let's take a look at the coverage. In outdoor areas, two types of APs are available. APs with directional antennas and APs with omnidirectional antennas. Before determining the coverage distance of a single AP, you need to know how to select an AP model. There are six common outdoor APs, AP8130DN, AP8030DN, AP8150DN, AP8050DN, AP8182DN, and AP8082DN. Every two of them form a group. One is the AP81 series, and the other is the AP80 series. The AP80 series have built-in directional antennas with the horizontal and vertical lobe widths of 60 degrees and 30 degrees, respectively. The AP81 series have external antennas and the angle of external antennas can be 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees or 360 degrees. In most cases, the AP81 series with external directional antennas connected can be directly replaced by the AP80 series. Therefore, in outdoor scenarios, two types of APs are available, AP80 series with built-in directional antennas and AP81 series with 360-degree omnidirectional antennas connected. What are the application scenarios of APs with directional antennas and omnidirectional antennas? APs with directional antennas are applicable to narrow and long areas 
such as commercial streets and pedestrian streets. This is because directional antennas provide coverage in one direction and the coverage distance towards this direction is long, but the width of the directional antenna is narrower than that of omnidirectional antennas. In areas such as pedestrian streets and commercial streets, APs need to provide coverage in one direction but cannot interfere with radio signals in buildings on both sides. Therefore, APs with omnidirectional antennas are not used in such scenarios. What scenarios are APs with omnidirectional antennas applicable to? APs with omnidirectional antennas are applicable to open squares and parks. That is, consider two points in selecting APs with omnidirectional antennas and directional antennas. One point is the area shape. APs with directional antennas are applicable to narrow areas, such as roads, and APs with omnidirectional antennas are applicable to open parks and squares. The other point is whether the interference caused by an AP to the surrounding areas needs to be considered. Take a road as an example. In addition to the main coverage direction, do we need to consider the interference caused by the AP to both sides of the road? APs with omnidirectional antennas provide Wi-Fi coverage in a 360-degree manner and therefore will cause interference to the surrounding environment. In this case, APs with directional antennas are used. In addition to the selection of APs and antennas, you also need to understand the concept of EIRP. EIRP is the strength of signal sent from an AP. It equals the AP transmit power plus MIMO gain plus antenna gain and minus feeder loss. The EIRP value varies according to local laws and regulations. As a result, the AP transmit power and coverage distance may be different. The AP transmit power is adjustable and the MIMO gain is determined by both the AP and STA. When a single stream STA accesses a multi-stream AP, a MIMO gain is generated. The dual stream gain is 3 dB and the triple stream gain is 5 dB. When a multi-stream STA accesses a multi-stream AP, no MIMO gain is generated. Antenna gains are fixed depending on antennas. Generally, feeder loss is not considered. That is, the EIRP is subject to limits in different countries and also affects the coverage distance of an AP. Next, let's check the coverage distances of APs in different scenarios. The AP8030DN has built-in antennas of 60 degrees by 30 degrees. When the EIRP is not considered, the 2.4 GHz coverage distance is 170 meters and the 5 GHz coverage distance is 130 meters. When the power limits are 36 dB on the 2.4 GHz band and 30 dB on the 5 GHz band, the coverage distances on the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands are still 170 meters and 130 meters respectively. When the limit values are 20 dB and 23 dB on the two bands, the coverage distance becomes 110 meters. Note that these values only meet the requirements of basic services such as web browsing and WeChat when a small volume of traffic is required. When a large volume of traffic is required, for example in the case of video services, the AP8030DN supports coverage distances of only 120 meters on the 2.4 GHz band and 90 meters on the 5 GHz band. When the EIRP limits are 20 dB and 23 dB on the two bands, the coverage distance of AP8030DN is only 80 meters. In other words, when the AP8030DN is used to meet both the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz coverage requirements, deploy APs at a spacing of between 80 meters and 110 meters. 80 meters is the value when the EIRP limit is considered and 110 meters is the value when the EIRP limit is not considered. For the AP8130DN, omnidirectional antennas are generally used. The 2.4 GHz gain is 4 dB and the 5 GHz gain is 7 dB. The coverage distance is 100 meters when the EIRP limit is not considered and only low bandwidth is required. The coverage distance is 70 meters when the high bandwidth requirement is met. In conclusion, when the AP8030DN is used, the distance between APs is about 110 meters. This value is about 80 meters when the EIRP limit is considered. 
When the AP81 series with omnidirectional antennas connected are used, this value ranges from 70 meters to 100 meters. Pay attention to the coverage radius of an AP with omnidirectional antennas connected. That is, the distance between two APs ranges from 120 meters to 200 meters. How do we get the distance specifications? Similar to indoor scenarios, there is a path loss formula for outdoor scenarios. The attenuation values of 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz can be calculated based on the distance. The final field strength can be obtained by substituting the attenuation value into the formula for calculating the field strength. Generally, the field strength value must be greater than or equal to minus 70 dB, through which we can calculate the final coverage distance. Finally, let's look at the site design principles for outdoor areas. At first, APs cannot be installed at a high position, otherwise coverage holes are likely to occur. Therefore, outdoor omnidirectional and directional antennas are usually installed at a height of 6 meters to 10 meters. In addition, ensure no obstacle between the site and the coverage area. That is, when we design a WLAN for outdoor coverage, we consider no signal passing through obstacles. Second, avoid strong electromagnetic interference around the site. Third, reliable power supply is required for the site. In outdoor projects, APs are usually installed on specific positions with stable power supply, such as utility poles and surveillance poles.